Hi, I'm Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan is for the 1st of April. We'll cover in the Old Testament Judges chapters 11 and 12, Psalm chapter 50, and the New Testament 2 Corinthians chapter 1, the New King James Version of the Bible, Judges chapter 11, Jephthah. Now Jephthah, the Gileadite, was a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot, and Gilead begot Jephthah. Gilead's wife bore sons, and when his wife's sons grew up, they drove Jephthah out and said to him, You shall have no inheritance in our father's house, for you are the son of another woman. Then Jephthah fled from his brothers and dwelt in the land of Tob, and worthless men banded together with Jephthah and went out raiding with him. It came to pass after a time that the people of Ammon made war against Israel. So it was when the people of Ammon made war against Israel that the elders of Gilead went to get Jephthah from the land of Tob. Then they said to Jephthah, Come, and be our commander, that we may fight against the people of Ammon. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, Do you not hate me and expel me from my father's house? Why have you come to me now when you are in distress? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, that is why we have turned again to you now, that you may go with us and fight against the people of Ammon and be our head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. So Jephthah said to the elders of Gilead, if you take me back home to fight against the people of Ammon and the Lord delivers them to me, shall I be your head? And the elders of Gilead said to Jephthah, the Lord will be a witness between us if we do not do according to your words. Then Jephthah went with the elders of Gilead, and the people made him head and commander over them. And Jephthah spoke all his words before the Lord in Mizpah. Now Jephthah sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon, saying, What do you have against me that you have come to fight against me and my land? And the king of the people of Ammon answered the messengers of Jephthah, Because Israel took away my land when they came up out of Egypt from the Arnon as far as the Jabbok and to the Jordan. Now therefore restore those lands peaceably. So Jephthah again sent messengers to the king of the people of Ammon and said to him, Thus says Jephthah, Israel did not take away the land of Moab, nor the land of the people of Ammon. For when Israel came up from Egypt, they walked through the wilderness as far as the Red Sea and came to Kadesh. Then Israel sent messengers to the king of Edom saying, Please let me pass through your land. But the king of Edom would not heed. And in like manner, they sent to the king of Moab, but he would not consent. So Israel remained in Kadesh. Then, and they went along through the wilderness and bypassed the land of Edom and the land of Moab, came to the east side of the land of Moab and encamped on the other side of the Arnon. But they did not enter the border of Moab, for the Arnon was the border of Moab. Then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, king of the Amorites, king of Heshbon, and Israel said to him, Please let us pass through your land into our place. But Sihon did not trust Israel to pass through his territory. So Sihon gathered all his people together and camped in Jahaz and fought against Israel. And the Lord God of Israel delivered Sihon and all his people into the hand of Israel, and they defeated them. Thus Israel gained possession of all the land of the Amorites who inhabited that country. They took possession of all the territory of the Amorites from the Arnon to the Jabbok and from the wilderness to the Jordan. And now the Lord God of Israel has dispossessed the Amorites from before his people Israel. Should you then possess it? Will you not possess whatever Chemosh your God gives you to possess? So whatever the Lord our God takes possession of before us, we will possess. And now are you any better than Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab? Did he ever strive against Israel? Did he ever fight against them? While well, Israel dwelt in Hezbon and its villages, in Aror and its villages, and in all the cities along the banks of the Arnon for 300 years, why did you not recover them within that time? Therefore, I have not sinned against you, but you wronged me by fighting against me. May the Lord, the judge, render judgment this day between the children of Israel and the people of Ammon. However, the king of the people of Ammon did not heed the words which Jephthah sent him. Jephthah's vow and victory. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah, and he passed through Gilead and Manasseh, and passed through Mizpah of Gilead. And from Mizpah of Gilead, he advanced toward the people of Ammon. And Jephthah made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver the people of Ammon into my hands, then it will be that whatever comes out of the doors of my house to meet me, 
When I return in peace from the people of Ammon, shall surely be the Lord's, and I will offer it up as a burnt offering. So Jephthah advanced toward the people of Ammon to fight against them, and the Lord delivered them into his hands. And he defeated them from Aurora as far as Mineth, 20 cities, and to Abel Kiramim with a very great slaughter, as the people of Ammon were subdued before the children of Israel. Jephthah's daughter. When Jephthah came to his house at Mizpah, there was his daughter coming out to meet him with timbrels and dancing, she, and she was his only child. Besides her, he had neither son nor daughter, and it came to pass when he saw her that he tore his clothes and said, Alas, my daughter, you have brought me very low. You are among those who trouble me, for I have given my word to the Lord, and I cannot go back on it. So she said to him, My father, if you have given your word to the Lord, do to me according to what has gone out of your mouth, because the Lord has avenged you of your enemies, the people of Ammon. Then she said to her father, Let this thing be done for me. Let me alone for two months, that I may go and wander on the mountains and bewail my virginity, my friends and I. So he said, Go, and he sent her away for two months, and she went with her friends and bewailed her virginity on the mountains. And it was so at the end of two months. As she returned to her father, and he carried out his vow with her, which he had vowed, she knew no man, and it became a custom in Israel that the daughters of Israel went four days each year to lament the daughter of Jephthah, the Gileadite. And now, as I get Judges 12, we go through the Old Testament scriptures once in a year and the New Testament twice in a year. Jephthah's conflict with Ephraim. Judges 12. Then the men of Ephraim gathered together, crossed over towards Zaphon, and said to Jephthah, Why did you cross over to fight against the people of Ammon and did not call us to go with you? We will burn your house down on you with fire. And Jephthah said to them, My people and I were in a great struggle with the people of Ammon, and when I called you, you did not deliver me out of their hands. So when I saw that you would not deliver me, I took my life in my hands and crossed over against the people of Ammon. And the Lord delivered them into my hand. Why then have you come up to me this day to fight against me? Now Jephthah gathered together all the men of Gilead and fought against Ephraim. And the men of Gilead defeated Ephraim because they said, You Gileadites are fugitives of Ephraim among the Ephraimites and among the Manassites. The Gileadites seized the fords of the Jordan before the Ephraimites arrived. And when he, any Ephraimite who escaped said, Let me cross over. The men of Gilead would say to him, Are you an Ephraimite? If he said no, then they would say to him, Then say Shibboleth. And he would say Shibboleth, for he could not pronounce it right. Then they would take him and kill him at the fords of the Jordan. There, there fell at that time 42,000 Ephraimites. And Jephthah judged Israel six years. Then Jephthah the Gileadite died and was buried among the cities of Gilead. Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon. After him, Ibzan of Bethlehem judged Israel. He had 30 sons, and he gave away 30 daughters in marriage and brought in 30 daughters from elsewhere for his sons. He judged Israel seven years. Then Ibzan died and was buried at Bethlehem. After him, Elon, the Zebulonite, judged Israel. He judged Israel 10 years, and Elon, the Zebulonite, died and was buried at Aijalon in the country of Zebulun. After him, Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, judged Israel. He had 40 sons and 30 grandsons who rode on 70 young donkeys. He judged Israel eight years. Then Abdon, the son of Hillel, the Pirathonite, died and was buried in Pirathon in the land of Ephraim in the mountains of the Amalekites. Now it's time for Psalm 50. As I get that, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. And uh, my wife, Patricia, is a gourmet vegan chef. She's got hundreds of delicious vegan recipes. You can find them on the Healthy Living tab at DanielParsonsMinistry.com. God the Righteous Judge, Psalm 50, a Psalm of Asaph, the Mighty One, God the Lord, has spoken and called the earth. From the rising of the sun to its going down, out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God will shine forth. Our God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him and it shall be very tempestuous all around him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together to me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. 
Let the heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge, Selah. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I will not rebuke you for your sacrifices or your burnt offerings, which are continually before me. I will not take a bull from your house, nor goats out of your folds, for every beast of the forest is mine, and the cattle on a thousand hills. I know all the birds of the mountains and the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine in all its fullness. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer to God thanksgiving and pay your vows to the Most High. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. But to the wicked, God says, what right have you to declare my statutes or take my covenant in your mouth? Seeing you hate instruction and cast my words behind you. When you saw a thief, you consented with him and have been a partaker with adulterers. You give your mouth to evil and your tongue frames deceit. You sit and speak against your brother. You slander your own mother's son. These things you have done and I kept silent. You thought that I was altogether like you, but I will rebuke you and set them in order before your eyes. Now consider this, you who forget God, lest I tear you in pieces and there be none to deliver. Whoever offers praise glorifies me. And to him who orders his conduct aright, I will show the salvation of God. So now the New Testament passage, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search for Daniel Parsons Ministry on YouTube and you'll find my channel. I appreciate it. Greeting, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God, which is at Corinth, which all the saints who are in all Acacia, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Comfort in suffering. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also abounds through Christ. Now, if we are afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effective for enduring the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or if we are comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope for you is steadfast, because we know that as you are partakers of the suffering, so also you will partake of the consolation, delivered from suffering. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead who delivered us from so great a death and does deliver us in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. You are also helping together in prayer for us that thanks may be given by many persons on our behalf for the gift granted to us through many. Paul's sincerity for our boasting is this, the testimony of our conscience that we conducted ourselves in the world in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, and more abundantly toward you, for we are not writing any other things to you than what you read or understand. Now I trust you will understand even to the end, as also you have understood us in part, that we are your boast as you also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus, sparing the church. And in this confidence, I intended to come to you before that you might have a second benefit to pass by way of you to Macedonia, to come again from Macedonia to you, and be helped by you on my way to Judea. Therefore, when I was planning this, did I do it lightly? Or the things I plan, do I plan according to the flesh that with me there should be yes, yes, and no, no. But as God is faithful, our word to you was not yes and no. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, by me, Silvanus, and Timothy, was not yes and no, but in him was yes, for all the promises of God in him are yes, and in him, amen, to the glory of God through us. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who also has sealed us and given us a spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Moreover, I call God as witness against my soul that to spare you, I came no more to Corinth. Not that we have dominion over your faith, but our fellow workers for your joy, for by faith you stand. 
That's the end of today's Bible reading. God bless you until we're together again. Bye for now.